I'm going to do a wee video here of uh, a wee demonstration on your new van and show you how everything operates. So we'll just go inside here now and I'll start it off yet. So we'll just start off here with your control panel. So I'll just get her to focus a bit better. Right. You can see you just have uh, a couple of buttons here. That's your main on off button for your 12 volt. You can see you just switch it on and off. And these here are just indicators. So that's your wastewater, that's your fresh water, you can see it's 50% and that's your battery condition. And that's just showing your battery condition at the moment, it's 12.3 volts. Now when you plug the van in you'll see that going up to the very top, it should go up to 13.5 when it's charging. And it'll charge off the engine as well. Um, this wee light here will come on when the van's plugged in. And I think that's a wee alarm light will come on if your leisure battery goes very low. You know if you just keep running the van until it goes completely flat. But that there light up when you're plugged in and it's handy just to know that it's on. You know, if somebody plugs out the van or your trip outside trips on the post or something, if that light goes out, you know your your twelve your mains coming in and stopped. So the only thing, the only switch you really have on that panel to do anything is that one for switching the van on and off. The rest are just indicators. Um what we would say with your leisure battery, we would recommend that you would uh, plug the van in at least two days every fortnight. Especially throughout the winter time when you're not using the van to keep your leisure battery up. Now it's, it's it's not good to plug it in all the time, but we recommend at least two days a fortnight, and that'll keep your battery right throughout the year. But in the summertime, maybe not as much you're using the van. So that's just your control panel. So the next thing we're going to look at here is your fridge, and you can see the wee blue lights on here. Now that's the only light that'll stay on when the fridge is running, because the rest of the panel goes black. So if you want to switch off the fridge, we hold your finger on the button until that goes that disappears and that's it off. Now if you switch that back on, we just hold your finger here and you'll see the whole panel lights up. Now this first one here is your selector and at the moment it's on gas because we're not plugged in. But you can see as I scroll around there you have automatic, you have gas, you have automatic, you have your mains and it's flashing now because we're not plugged in and then the next one then is your battery when you're driving. And that's flashing because the engine's not going. So if you leave that on the automatic, it'll always choose what's available. So at the moment it's just it's picked gas itself because that's the only thing it has. If we plugged in the van, it'll go on two mains. And if we start the engine on the van, let's see if we just hit that again. That'll go. That'll always go black after about ten seconds. So if you leave it in automatic, it'll. If you start the van, it'll go on to the battery. If you stop the van, it'll go on to gas. And if you plug the van in, it'll go on to the, the wee mains so it'll always pick whatever's available and over here then is your temperature so straightforward enough that's the temperature inside the van and this one here that's turning off there's a heater actually inside if, sorry I'll show you this, this bar here heats up when the fridge is going and it just doesn't heat up very much but it heats up enough just to stop condensation on there because it's cold in here and it's warm out here so that's what that last one is so just just leave that on this one here you can't that's that's me switching it off there now but that's 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 the heater will always run when you have the fridge on so once the screen goes once you've chosen whatever you want the screen will go dark and the only indication that the fridge is running is the wee light is on the wee square button and to switch off the fridge hold your finger on it for about five seconds and go, the wee blue light goes off and that's the fridge off and to open and close your fridge you just have catches here so that's your fridge so the next thing we're going to look at here is your truma control panel for your heating. Now this here does, this van will heat the, heat the van on electric or gas or both and at the moment here you can see we just have the time up and there's nothing on this top screen. So we'll start off, if you want to start up the heater we'll, we'll hit this button here first and you'll see your camper fan flashing. Now the camper fans for, for this, this is for heating the camper fan itself. So if we want to heat the camper van, we'll, we'll hit the button on that and it'll say off. So the heating's actually off and we'll scroll this around to whatever temperature you want. So that's just turning that knob there. So we want that at 25 degrees and you always have to press the button again to actually register what you've picked. So you press the button again and that's you've now set the heating. The next one is your hot water and the next one here is what you're going to heat it with 
So you can see you've got a gas cylinder and you've got the lightning which is the electric. So if we press that, it gives you a choice. You have electric 2 which is 2 elements on, on your mains. Electric 1. You have mix 2 which is your gas and the 2 elements of electric. Mix 1 is gas and 1 element of electric and then the last one is just gas on its own. So if we're not plugged in at the moment now, the only thing that's going to work is gas. So if we press OK there. And we go on then to the next one, which is the fan. If we press that middle button again, it'll say eco, and we can change that to high or eco. And that just speeds the fan up. So whatever we press there. Now, if we press return now at this stage, we can see what we're after setting. We're heating the van. You can see the wee flame flashing there. So that means you're heating the van on gas and the fans on eco. So whatever is left on this top screen is what you've actually set. Now if we go back in again, you always go back in. Maybe a wee bit hard to see that. Let's see. I'll get a wee bit of light on. Yeah. Mm. If we hit that again, now we'll go back into that screen. And our camper fan's the first thing that flashes. So if we want to turn off the heating, we hit that again and it shows the temperature we had set before. We turn that back to zero until it says off and press the button. And the next thing we can do here now is heat the, heat the water. So we go into the next one. Press that and it says off. Now you have eco or hot. So that's 40 degrees and that one there is 60 degrees. So if we press hot now, we press hot and we'll go back in here and press the, that's the power selection, what you're going to use. And we're still on gas. So we'll press that OK. And if we press return then, it'll show us up here in the top screen we're heating the water on, you can see it there, on eco, on gas. So if we wanted to heat the water or the van on electric, what do we do is we go back in here and we'll choose water this time again. And when we want it hot, we'll go into the, the power setting and we'll go on to electric 2 and press OK and press return. And now we're heating the water on electric. And you can see there's, there's two lightnings, which means that's the electric 2. So we're now heating the water on electric. Now we've shown up a wheel alarm here now because we're not actually plugged in. But if we're plugged in, that alarm wouldn't be there. So if we go back out again, if we want to heat the van, we'll go back and hit the van, and we'll put the temperature up, say to 26 degrees, Press always press OK. Go back in here, and we'll switch off the water, off. Go back in, into the next one, and it's still on electric, and we'll press return. And now we're actually heating the van on electric, and the, the fan's still running on eco. So that's basically your settings, and any time you press return, it always shows you what you've actually set on the top screen. So if we want to switch, we know we know now we're, we're heating the van on electric. If we want to go back in and switch the heater heater off now, we'll go into the camper van, press the button, go back to off, and press the button again. And if we press return, now the top screen is completely blank. So that's showing you there now that you're not actually the the heater's actually off. All that's showing you there now is the time. So. If you want to go back in here now, you can set the time. We're now scrolling along to the actual time, and we can bring that to whatever time it is. So it's 13. Press OK. 13.20, say right. That's your time set. When we press that, that's your time up on the screen. Now, if you want to switch that panel off altogether, if the night time is too bright, you can hold your finger on the button. And it'll eventually say off, and then the screen will go completely clear. So that's the heating actually completely off, and the panel off as well. Now there's a there's a timer on this as well. I'll switch this back on again. Hold your finger on the button. If we we go in here, we can go to this timer here. Let's see. We just scroll along here to the timer. You can press the button, and it asks a start time. So if we want to heat the water, say seven o'clock in the morning. We'll press 7 o'clock and you want to end at 12 o'clock at night and then you want to heat the, the van say off just go scroll through that and you want to heat the water so we're going to heat the water on eco and what you want to heat it with so you want to heat it with gas and the timer on press on now if we press return at this stage You'll see up here in the corner now, that 
there's a timer on to heat the water on gas and that's what that is at the moment so to turn the timer off just go back into move this along go in here timer off and that's the timer gone again so hopefully that'll get you away on the heater how everything works on that so the next thing we're going to look at here is the uh, where the heater actually is and it's underneath the bed at the back and you see this cupboard here if we open this cupboard and then there's your heater at the bottom now what we're looking at here is the blue valve this is your frost valve and at the moment your frost valve is closed so you can see what I'm looking at here is this blue thing and it's going across the ways and that's the way it should be and there's a little button down the front as well that you push in so in the frost once the temperature reaches two degrees that's going to flip around like that and the wee button at the bottom is going to pop out you see the wee button at the bottom so to correct that we'll turn that around and we'll push in the wee button at the bottom so just put a wee torch in there to give you a better look at that you can see the button here at the bottom is what I'm on about when that flips around there you see the button put, pops out so to correct that you'll turn that around there and push in the button at the bottom and that's the water system closed now once that valve is actually open it's opening the water system and it's draining all the water out of your hot water tank in your heater to protect it from frost now at that stage you're going to lose all water pressure in your taps now if you want to winterize the van what you would do is you come along here you would open that and open all your taps in between hot and cold so you'd have your kitchen tap and your two taps in your bathroom and you'd open them in between hot and cold and all the water on the taps will run out through that valve onto the street outside so that's how you winterize the van and then you could drain your tanks you could drain your your fresh water tank and your wastewater tank outside as well and that's all the water out of the van now in very cold temperatures like we had a few years ago like the minus five where it gets very cold we would recommend when you get to this stage and you have the taps open that you actually try to blow into the taps to blow as much water out of the pipework as you can to just to protect really the the uh, the heads of the taps they're more prone to frost as you can see the pipes in here are all rubber so the frost really doesn't affect them as much as it does the the plastic taps themselves so anytime that you have any problems with your tap when you switch it on and the pressure is a bit funny looking come out and always check this valve make sure that it's, it's around that way and the button at the bottom is pressed in so that can happen any time later on in the year if you're camping maybe at night time that might trip itself so any time you have any trouble with your water always have a wee look at that valve I would recommend too that you wouldn't store anything in that wee compartment because the heater needs a bit of air to circulate around and there's a lot of pipes and wires and stuff down there so that's your heater so if you look here now what I've done here at the front we've sort of made up your your, your front bed that's that's the cushion layout there and you can see there what I've done I've put this there's a thin cushion there I've put it underneath that and that'll give you a fairly flat bed now you mightn't need that bed because you have the drop down bed and the big bed at the back but it just shows you how that works the table actually drops down I'll show you that now in a second so in underneath your table here you can see this little handle you just pull that handle if I can show you it operating you just pull that handle like that and push the table down the table will push down and when you let go of the handle it'll lock itself so that's how you collapse the table you can see there at the moment the table's actually up so if we want to collapse the table we'd push in that handle and push the table down the way now to make up the bed there was a wooden piece in here and I've taken that out I'll just show you that that's that piece there so to make up the bed I've actually taken that out but that just clips in there for the extra seat and you have a wee socket over here as well and that's your outlet for your heating now if you want to distribute the heat around the van you can open, you can open and close these wee vents so if you want more heat in the back you can close the ones at the front or vice versa you can close the ones in the back and you get more heat at the front and you see the wee clip over here that's where that board clips into there's one on each side so that's basically your bed and I'll show you here on this side here what happens you can see this this section here lifts if you lift this up here it'll slide back in again see so just put that up and that bit there just slides back in and drops down so what you do there is you you lift that up there and slide it right out and just drop it and then this board here goes down the top of it so that's the bottom part of your bed 
Now then underneath this here now as well, you have your 220 volt trups. That's your main trups there for the van. Just the same as you, what you have at home. See, we'll just open from this side. They just, they just trap down the way and you reset them back up the way. Same as what you have at home. So that's your, that's your mains trap. So that's where that, that's where that is and underneath that uh, seat there. So the next thing I'm showing you here is your fresh water tank. And you see it's just underneath this seat here, left up the board. And what you're working at here is your waste, the, the, the valve for opening and closing and draining, draining in the fresh water tank. At the moment it's closed. Now to open this you just give us two rotations and no more and that'll drain your water tank. Now if you give it three if you just give it three quarters of a turn it'll leave twenty litres in the bottom of the tank for travelling. But to, 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 to drain this just give us two turns. That way that's sufficient to drain the tank. And that's draining right onto the street and to tighten it, just give it a tighten up then. And that's your inspection port here, you can open that up for cleaning the tank. And you can see you have an overflow there, that's your inlet there, and your overflow pipe as well, in case you forget to get your hose. And that's really all there is to your fresh water tank. So you can see there, that's your that's your, bit, your, your seating area back to normal again. And underneath here on your table, you have a little handle. You see this wee handle here, and that locks the top of the tabletop. So if you want it at the moment, we can move the tabletop around. You see we can spin it about and move it about the place and wherever you want to wherever you want to set it then just just lock the handle that's all it does there just that we just that we push there and that locks the handle so that's just for locking your tabletop and your drop down bed it just operates here with this handle just push that with your thumb and give it a pull down and that's your bed your bed just pulls down and there's a ladder down and the clips on what I would say is if this this skylight here I would keep that closed if you're not using the bed because you'll, you'll end up with a white sort of white patch in the bed here from the light, the sunlight coming in so if you're not using that bed it will close that sky just close the the blind on it completely and when you're pushing that back up it just clips up on each side and just give it a wee give it a wee pull down to check it and that's the, that's the clip down on each side again so that's fairly straightforward so we'll just have a quick look at your hub your hub has just got the three knobs on it there's, there's a The, there's ignition here on the on the oven itself. If we press this here, we have our grill on this side. You can see it lighting up there. And then at zero it's off, and then over the side here is your oven. And you see that's lit inside there. And once that's lit, then you, you just take your finger off and it, stays, it should stay lit. So it's your oven this way. At zero it's off, and it's the grill over the side, and back to zero, and that's your igniter. So on the, on the hob itself you're going to have to just use a, a, a lighter on it, but there is safeties in all these rings that they won't let out gas unless there's actually a flame on it. So if somebody comes along and switches these over, there's not going to be any gas coming out unless there's actually that. And back to your tap here, I was on about the time you were, how to winterize the van. In between hot and cold, that's hot that way and cold that way. And we just open up your, open up your tap and that'll let the air out. Now at this stage you're going to have to have the van switched off to be sure that the pump's not running if you want to winterize the van so you'll switch off the van activate the blue valve at the back open all your taps in between hot and cold here in the middle and just open them up and let the let the air go in and let the water go out and that's how you'll want to raise the van so the bathroom and stuff's fairly straightforward there's you have your flush here for the toilet and you'll get you can, that just that gives you a wee flush and then you you'll get an indicator coming up on this panel here to tell you that the uh, cassettes fall when it needs to be changed so everything's on that wee panel there and you have your your lever here at the side for opening and closing and just for when if you have kids in the van make sure you tell them to give it that extra push at the end to be sure that's actually fully closed and you have a main socket on here as well and that's your light switch up on here so we're just getting a wee look here at your tv you can see up in this corner here is your booster and there's a wee, wee light on it here. When you switch off the van, that'll go off anyway. So just always make sure that's switched on. There's a wee switch here on it, but you can just leave it on. You can see it switches on and off. You won't get on a TV reception unless that light's actually on. And that, you don't need to go near that knob, that's just turned up all the way. So that's your booster and your TV's plugged in here. Now to pull out your TV, see this? You have the this little uh, tab sticking out here. You have to push that 
and then pull this here out. So I'll just do that for you now. So you can see now we've slid the TV out. Now you're going to have to pull this. You're going to have to pull this out till it stops. Give it until you you feel it actually stopping. And then on this little, see the little knob here at the side. Pull that out, and your TV, your TV will drop down. It's a bit close to me there now, but you can see. Once you pull out that knob, your TV your, your TV drops down, and you can you can swing it around. Now because the TV is plugged in all the time, the only thing we need now is the remote control. I just press the red button, and you'll see the blue see the light going blue underneath the TV here. That's your TV coming on. You can see there now that we're on RT something. Um, what you have here on your remote control is a source button, which is this one. And if you press that, you'll get a list up on the screen, and you can scroll down through that satellite. You can have a DVD, AV, or HDMI, USBs. But what we want for TV is digital TV, and just press OK. Now it'll always come back on, just straight onto the TV like there now, because we had TV on there before this. Now every time you move the van, you're going to have to retune. The serve view or the free view on it, and how you do that in this TV is this AQT button. See this red button here? Just press that and hold it. And that's what you get up on the screen. Now it'll ask you, it's straightforward enough. So we just press that AQT button for about 10 seconds, and the first thing it'll ask you do you want what, what country is UK? And that's okay, and then it just comes up auto search. Now that'll just search right across here, and it'll come up all the stations and radio stations up here. You can see it's picking up straight away 2060 no TV channels there. So just let that go the whole way up. So just to recap when you, when you, if you move the van or you've come to a campsite or whatever, switch on the TV and press the AQT button for about 10 seconds and just press okay. That screen will come up and that'll go up to 100% of the top, and that'll it'll give you a um, a list of all your channels. So that's really all there is to the TV. So I'm just going to move outside the van here, inside your drawer here. You can see you have a little handle. That's for your wastewater valve outside. And you have a couple of stoppers here for your for your shower. So I'll show you where this goes outside here now. So just starting outside your van here, you have your, your toilet cassette here. You see the door lifts up. There's a magnet actually on that black piece there. And there's a bit of steel in behind the van, so that keeps the door up. And that's your toilet cassette. And it's straightforward enough, you just pull that out, slide it back in again. And there's, there's wheels and the whole lot on it for wheeling it about. And moving along here, we have our garage door at the back. And you see inside here, we have our jacket wheel brace, which is in this black box here your awning handle and then you have your carpet set for inside that's a fitted carpet set and you also have another main socket inside here as well and plus you have the light there in the corner so we'll go around the far side here and show you your, your gas compartment that's inside the boot here on the far side so you just open up the big door and it's inside here so open up these here too and you can see there's a rubber seal around here to, to seal this whole compartment in and there's a, a vent here in the floor, so I always try to keep that clear as well. So that's just your gas cylinder. And we've given you a gas spanner here as well. Now the spanner just goes on here to the nut. And the nut is a left hand thread, so to loosen this you have to actually loosen it clockwise. To take off the holes of your chains in the tank. And to tighten it, go anti-clockwise. So that's the, way that, 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 that's the way that nut operates, and that spanner will fit it. To switch your gas on and off, just switch it off by closing that and to open it just do the reverse anti-clockwise so if you're changing your tank or your travel we'll just, we'll just close that now so that's all there is to it if you want to change that there you have to put your spanner on here and turn that clockwise to loosen and anti-clockwise to tighten so we're just underneath the van here just ahead of the, the back wheel here and you can see now where I put the handle on. The handle goes on that wee square thing there. And there's your pipe, and we just give that a turn, and that's your wastewater. So that's all you have to do, open and close that. 
so you just put the put that put the handle on there and just give it a quarter turn anti-clockwise and that opens the opens the valve and then we'll just close it again that closes it and up on this side here then you have your your fresh water fill and always make sure that uh, you don't give somebody in a filling station your keys they might put diesel in there because your diesel flaps actually up here at the front it's in behind here and you have an ad blue here as well that'll come up in the dash when you need to to put an extra ad blue that goes on here I'm moving into your cab here now your your bonnet pull is on the side here and that's for opening and closing your bonnet so you have to have the door open to access that and inside here underneath the passenger seat you have your main 12 volt control box with all your wee fuses and that's your charging unit and the whole lot so everything's underneath the passenger seat now I'll give you a run down the dash now in a second and we'll just have a wee look at the engine compartment here first so there's really not much to see if you want to your window washers over here in the far on the left hand side you see they're just behind the headlight and the rest then is just your your, your engine cooling and your brake fluid and steering fluid and stuff your dubstick's down in the front here just pull that up and down and if you ever have to jump start the van there's a positive on here and a negative onto the frame of the engine somewhere or you, you can you can you can clip it onto some metal you know, one of these metal fasteners here at the front but that's your positive there for your jump lead and there's a little cover that covers that up and down here so that's, that's what that is there for jump starting the van so that's really all there is to the engine so we're just in the cab here now and just show you a few things you have your reverse camera here when you switch on the van and put the van into reverse you can see that pops up on the screen that's your reverse camera and you can see there that's your back bumper but you'll get used to a wee bit of driving about and see how you get on with reversing now if we, if we switch off the van if you want to switch this on when you're driving you can actually hit that button there so that'll come up as you're driving along you can actually look out the back now you haven't got much of a view you only have maybe 10 foot behind you but maybe, maybe in a city or a town you want to look behind you that's that's how you do that if you're driving along or you switch it off again now around here the only thing you might not have seen much before this you have a cruise control and you have a speed limiter on this bottom stock here the cruise control you switch it off here give that one shot up the way and that'll start your cruise control and then you can speed the van up or down on the stock at zero it's off and at the bottom end you have a speed limiter now what that actually does there it gives you um, it gives you the facility to limit the speed of the van and you can see that up here on the dash you can see that 20 miles an hour and I'm moving that stock up and down now and you can set that at whatever you want so if you, if you had a 30 mile an hour speed limit I'm switching it off there at SLD it's called and I'm switching it back on again SLD connected the van will drive up to 30 mile an hour and then it'll, it'll not go any faster but you can you can put that to whatever speed you want you could have that set, set at 55 say if you don't want to go over the speed limit and uh, the van won't go any higher than that and it just saves you looking at the clocks so it's a handy wee feature to have along here at the front you just have your stereo and your aircon the aircon operates on this button here so if you want aircon, we press that and you see the little light coming on and that gives you your aircon and then you have your stereo here at the front now what we would recommend with the stereo is a little button here in the corner and when you're not using the van even just press that button and clip out the front it won't fall out just let it sit there and that'll just be sure that it's not draining the van when it's not being used and back on around here you have your map holder here in the corner and here at the side there's a little clip and if you pull that you can see what happens this front bit here opens out and you can put like a you get a tab or whatever and it'll spring load it onto the front of that so how that that's activated there from the side because it's just this little lever and you can just clip it back in again now when you're finished and clip that back in and push that back down again and you have a bit of storage in there that keeps if you have the air con on that'll be cold in there as well and you have your glove box and then you have your your different holders for your cups and all and over there as you can see in the passenger door there's a little uh, blow up kit if you ever have any punctures that's uh, there's a compressor in that along with the rep repair fluid for punctures and that's what that is there so you can see now the TV's just tuned itself in I just went away there and came back and that's your TV tuned in if we press this metal button now we'll get our 
you can move that up and down there your different channels so that's all you have to do is just press that AQT button and press OK and then switch the TV off, switch it off there now what we'll do with the TV now is just flip it around and we're going to just flip it back up again now once you have the TV put back up again you're going to have to take the weight off the TV and actually sort of pull this knob in and out till it actually clips in you can see it pulls out and it clips back in again so you're going to have to push the TV up and be sure that's clipped in before the TV slides back in again so that's your telly back in and just close up the door and that's everything done so hopefully that video has really helped you and uh, if you have any questions at any time you can give us a ring about any extra stuff that you're not sure of and uh, good luck with your new van and thank you